All right, so we are starting session four of Dancing with Dragons. We have a bit of a short crew tonight. Uh, we lost two of our five players through misadventure, and uh, they'll be rejoining uh, the campaign soon, uh, hopefully next session. Um, we wish them well, and we are going to press on. When last we left off, Forga had just been tossed out of the bar, which was exactly what was the perfect thing that would happen because he had the the data disk, the data stick, and was able to pass it to uh, T, who was able to, you know, they, you've gotten the files out of the honeycomb. Uh, Harlan was still drinking and talking to his waitress in the honeycomb um, as ready one back up for Joe and Larmo. Um, Joe and Larmo were maintaining their cover. And um, I believe Larmo, I believe Joe was now hesitant to leave without bringing their uh, childhood friend who was a dancer at the club, uh, surprisingly. And uh, Larmo was unsure how to extricate himself or just thinking of maybe staying till morning. And um, so we're going to pick up from there. Um, so Thorgo, when you drop off the data disk to, to T, T tells uh, uh, Fink Noddle, uh, take the beater ground car take the disc, go to the hideout, don't open the door, um, don't do anything with it, hide it somewhere, I don't want to know where, in case anything happens. But guard it with your life, and just get it as far away from here as possible. So, that's going to cover what Fink Noddle is doing this scenario, just protecting the disc and getting it out of Dodge. So he goes, all right, where are we picking up the others? He's asking me. Is yeah. He? Okay. Um, well, Harlan's still inside drinking, chatting up the waitress. Um, I, do I remember where Larmo is? Larmo, the last Larmo. time you saw him was in the main room. He bumped you, remember, and handed off the disc. Right. Right. Oh, Larmo see... passed off the disc to me. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and Joe. Joe's off talking to an old friend. You ran into someone he knew? Kind of, kind of side, side, little side adventure talking to an old friend. Who he, I think they're going to try to extricate them as well from the, the bar. It's, it's a personal thing. <sighs> okay. Um, every minute they're in there jeopardizes this. And since we handled this so quickly, it does offer another opportunity. Okay. Um, I need you, he says, you still have your ID and your pass for the black market, yes? You got it. I'm going to place an order, and I'm going to send you to pick it up. Um, and then you're going to come back here. I may not be here. Um, if I'm not, I'll give you a new, another location to meet the van. Um, okay. He says, uh, we're going to say that you're picking up... Uh, Um, he basically, he goes, you're going to be picking up uh, an order for Alpha One. That's the well, I'm going to place the name under. He says, go to this address, and he, he punches it in. It's going to look like an abandoned building. They do all their business through a slot in the door. Um, you'll do they pay know what when I look like? Are they going to know what I look like? They'll, I'll tell them to expect a... a I'll, you know, to expect a uh, Yazarian. Uh, you're going to be asking for the Alpha One order. You're to pay for it when you get there. Um, it's going to be a couple of boxes. Okay. Got it. Um, uh, and let me know when you get it. I may have you stop at another place in the uh, in the black market to pick up something else. I'm on it. Okay, so you go off and do that. Okay, Harlan, 
you're drinking in the bar and your conochrom goes off. Okay. Is uh, anybody near me to overhear any? It's 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 text. It's a data message only. No voice. No uh, no video. Okay, I'll look. And it says uh, outside now. Okay, no other annotation on it or anything. Okay, uh, I guess if my bill is paid up, I will leave. I'll give Violet the high sign and walk out the door. Okay. Your build's paid up. You walk out. Um, you see the van up the block. Um, do you okay. walk? Do you approach the van? It didn't say, so I'm assuming that's where I'm going. Okay. As you approach the van, it kind of slowly starts pulling away and rounds the corner. So that no one from the front of the bar will see you get into it. Okay. Okay. So you, the door opens and, and T's in there. Think Noddle's gone. Thorg is gone. And he says, where's Larmo and Joe? Inside. Um, we've got what we want. Why, why are they still there? I don't know. I didn't want to send them I didn't want to send them the message because they could be, you know, they're undercover. Um, I need you to go back in there and get them out. Uh-huh. Uh sure. All right, I'll be waiting here. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Uh um, when I left, was Larmo still in the lobby? I was in the bar. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was at the bar. Okay, I'll stroll back in. I guess do I have to pay cover again? Um, they see you and they're like, um, "You were just here." Uh, you know, I got out of here and I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get Violet's number. And they laugh, and they said, well, "Good luck with that. Head back in. It's fine." And they wave. Uh, and they laugh, and they wave you because you've been there for hours, and you haven't caused any trouble. So there, there's not a, an issue. And you see Larmo, and you see uh, Joe, and uh, Joe is dancing, and and Larmo's, you know, hanging out at the bar, and and the staff that seems very nervous, so they're giving him a bit of a berth. <laughs> All right. Um. I have no subtlety. I guess I will look and see if I can catch Joe's eye. Um, you do. Whichever of the compound eyes we're talking about. Right. You do catch Joe's attention. And I just look and go. And Joe just does a flourish and, and sh you know I mean, shakes her head and, and flexes her uh, her antenna in a sign of concern. And then motions towards the other girl. I have no idea what's going on with Joe. Other than she's been doing drugs all night. Okay. I'm gonna say that I've been like I'm like keeping an eye on him because I if right. there's something going on, like he would since I saw him go outside, like I he would be the one to let us know if something's up. So I'm just like subtly watching him and see mm -hmm. if he's see if I see that. Um, and do you want me to roll for that, or, or am I just seeing his gesturing? Um, roll your, uh, what do we, what is it? It's, um, hang on. Perception? Yeah, I think so. I think that okay. would be perception. Yeah, roll in, that. In, intuition or logic? Oh, intuition. Okay. INT. Okay, INT. -E yeah, I made it. Yeah, okay. I made it. I made it. I made it. You see him gesturing. All right. So I'm going to. Harlan, your chronic cup grows off before he does anything. I look down. Um, uh, have. Find out where to go to score a to to score 
Um, you are texting the wrong guy. <laughs> This, hold on. What, what did I name it? I actually named this. It's, uh, find out where to go to score. I think picks uh, fairy snow. So what? Fairy snow. Fairy snow. Um, you know it is a human. Uh, it is a human ingested drug. Uh, one of the. Uh, ingestibles that the snack dragons uh specializes in it's quite popular in solar major and so in solar minor across the system it's basically a uh a half size it looks like a half size pixie stick it tastes like um some kind of a super sweet sweetener um and it increase it increases en energy pleasure emotional warp distorts time and sensory perception it's kind of a party drug with some dangerous side effects um it's it's which include uh memory loss depression anxiety uh insomnia and uh decreased interest in sex but it's you know it's basically like a, an ecstasy molly okay. uh, I'll see if I can catch Violet's eyes if she's still working her work. You do. Her. Okay. You do. And see if she'll come over to me. She comes over and she says, back again. I, you see, I got this party I'm going to, and they told me I needed to bring some fairy dust. And she smiles and uh, says, uh, let me get you a card. Okay. And she goes over to one of the enforcers, explains, points to you. He laughs, he nods, and takes out a card. And you go and passes it. And it's basically to a, a, a warehouse. She gives it and, back to me. I ask her, so what nights are you working this week? And she tells you. Uh, she says, okay, the warehouse is going to look like it's closed, and it's been closed for a while. Don't go in the main entrance. Go around the side. Okay. Um, there'll be someone in, There'll be someone there, and just be cool, and everything should be fine. Show them the card? Hmm? Show them the card? Uh, yeah. Okay. So after I get that information, I walk straight up to Larmo and say, Hey, we got the thing. Okay. Uh, and I walk out. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to roll to see if the bartender noticed that. Because I did specifically say that they were giving you a bit of a birth out of uh, nerves. Because you'd been so ill-tempered about the... <laughs> The food and the your lack of taste. <laughs> uh, that was totally unnecessary, by the way, because I saw you gesture. <laughs> you don't know absolutely. that, though. <laughs> Even if I had seen you watch me, I may not know that. <laughs> All right. Well, luckily for you, I rolled a sixty-nine, and I'm sure the uh, bartender does not have a, a intuition that high. Okay, that's good. All right. So, so the two of you come out. Well, um, I'm going to need to talk to some because I need to talk to someone to make sure that the car was unloaded. Okay, but you can go over to one of the enforcers. Okay, so uh, I go over to one of them and I ask them if uh, the car, if uh, the uh, product was taken from my vehicle. Of course, sir. We didn't. Uh... You know, it's we've taken it to the, you know, our first our holding facilities. Some business came up. I'm going to need uh, I'm going to need my car brought around, please. Certainly, sir. I'll do. I'll see to that right now. Thank you. Okay. And uh, looks, so, Harlan, did you just walk out after you told them that? Yep. Okay. So you're back at the van. They bring around the car, and uh, All the, right. I... the the enforcer who you were speaking to says that. Uh, I'm going to act as your driver if you need me, sir. 
No, uh, thanks very much. Uh, the, the biz I need to take up is personal, and I give him an, I slip him a nice fat tip. Okay, uh, you do so. He says thank you, and uh, we'll be. Should we be expecting you back this evening? Should be back. Should be back. If not, uh, if not, if not tonight, then some. I should be back in the, in the relatively soon, relatively okay. near future. So you've got the car. Where do you go? I assume we had some rendezvous point that we were right now. Just driving away from this place. Okay, you drive away. <laughs> After you drive about two blocks, the van pulls behind you. Okay. Pull over. Okay. All right. He says, well done. What the hell's going on with Joe? Why Why isn't Joe leaving? Just waved me off. I think he, I think there's someone there he knows and is, is, in, is in trouble and he wants to remove this person from this trouble. All right. Well, we're in trouble. Which is complicated. We need to act fast. They're they're gonna have to figure it out on their own. Um, I've sent Forga for a few things we might need, and uh, we're going to try and since you've gotten the information so quickly, I'm a little uneasy about basically having flooded this city with gumdrops. Now you are. It, I did what I had to do, but now that we've gotten what we need, maybe we can rectify that situation. Steal it back? Um, no, I don't want it. We're going to just, I said, we're going to raid the warehouse and burn everything down. Um, so, Thorga, you are in the, you get a message after you pick up that box to go to the uh, rare Holoved store, Hidden Treasures. And pick up an order there. All right. I go over to Arson. Harlan and I say, so arson then. He says, don't worry, we're going to make, no one's going, if we can pull this off, no one's going to, no one needs to die. Okay. The list is growing. All right. So Thorga, you go there and you... You are at the address. And it, as he said, it looks like a boarded up abandoned building. All right, I'll look, I'll slowly drive around at a distance and look for a door that potentially is described or has a slot. It has, a, there's a door with a slot. All right, park my bike a little distance away so that, you know, I'm, they couldn't jump me. I actually have a bit of a chance to run to it if I need to. Gotcha. Walk to the door. Knock, knock, knock. Look around. Make sure there's no slot opens, you and you just see like a service robot, and it says, you know, in 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 Pan Galactic, yes, can I help you? I'm here to make a pickup for Alpha One. Uh, Alpha One, that order is ready. Uh, uh, do you have payment? I guess I use my card. That's okay, it. it actually extends like a, a hand, like a, a, a hand, and there's a slot in the palm. It's all like almost like an Android service robot. Okay, so you don't have chip, and I just no tap, and I just put the card in. Okay, um, it processes the payment and says, uh, you know, thanks, you know, thank you for your patronage. And the slot where it's facing closes. You hear it taking a few steps coming back to the door, and then a slot at your feet opens, and a box slides out. Okay. Look around, pick it up. Pick it up, Attach you have it. Attach my bike. Okay. Attach you... to my bike or put it in a, a holding, whatever I've got. I don't know if I've got saddlebags or anything. We can say it came with saddlebags easy enough. You can put, it's actually two small boxes. Um, yeah, it's that's about right. the It'll sign of a case of soda. You know, like a 12 pack of cans of soda. Yep. Uh, yep. So it's one okay. on either side. Um, do you want to open them or, or see what you, you're picking up? I wasn't told to, so I, I, I don't think I will. Okay. So what's your next stop? Oh, you know what I'm going to, although I think my next stop is, uh, I'm, what is my next stop? I've got two boxes abandoned building two boxes i don't know what my next stop is you said uh, go to the hollywood shop hidden oh, treasures. right, right. shop that's right um you've been I'm there, going to go you there. Know he's an arms dealer yeah 
But before I get there, oh yes, I remember that. Um, before I get there, I'm gonna take a little little side detour to make sure no, see if I can make sure nobody's following me. You drive around possible? for about 10, 15 minutes, make your intuition roll. Okay. That is, oh boy. Um, oh, I, I missed it by one. You're pretty sure that no one's following you. Okay. Um, in that case, I am going to take a little detour to a, some place where I've got secluded if I can find one. And I'm just going to sort of take a peek in the box to see if I can see what's in there. Uh, one box. It looks like a dozen cans of Crimson Bison Energy Drink. Okay. And take the other out. looks like a dozen. It's way heavier than a can of, of energy drink. Mm, okay. And the other is a dozen, uh, uh, you know, a dozen cans of lullaby iced tea. And again, it's way heavier than a can of iced tea. Okay. Close it back up, zip it up, and head back, uh, continue on. Okay. So you remember where the Holovid store is? Yes. And the uh, proprietor, yeah. the human, uh, Don Long John Johnson. Yes. And he says, uh, good evening. Uh, we were just closing up. Uh, what can I help you with? I've got a delivery um, from Alpha One. Oh, a pickup. Oh, it's a pickup. Sorry, I thought I was delivering the cans to him. I'm the no, no. worst drug runner ever. <laughs> Um, Do I pay you actually, for this, or do you pay me? No. He gives you a uh, a pair of briefcases. Okay. He goes Thank and uh, payment. Cha -ching. The card comes okay, out. Again. You've got the card with all the money on it, and uh, you get text where to meet um, and where the van is. So you guys are now okay. parked all together in this van, in an alley, about two blocks away from the address on Harlan's card. And he says, okay, here's the situation. You're going to go and pretend you're going to make a buy. You need to stun, you know, capture, you know, everyone there, drag them out, uh, he goes, these dozen cans of lullaby iced tea, they're actually camouflaged doze grenades. Um, do you have, I trust you all have gas masks? Yes, I think so. I don't know that we ever got any. Did we? Well, he's got three, he has some in the, in the car. Yes, I did get one. Yes, I do have one. I didn't. So if you if you don't have one, you make sure that you have one. Okay. He says if that doesn't work, um, and he gives uh, Harlan the two maxi clips for your gyrojet pistol. Okay. And he says the white one are uh, are are doze clips. They cause no damage, but they will explode in a, a small radius of doze gas. And what's the other one? Regular? Um, the other one is Tangler. It'll be enough to, if you hit, it'll be, if you hit and they're not nimble enough, it'll be enough to incapacitate them. Okay. Um, and he says, I also have these, and he has a uh, a pair of uh, needler pistols, but they look hot wired. They look heavier than regular needler pistols. And he goes, these are what they call um, hot needlers. They're energy enhanced, so they can go through skin suits and, and, and inertia screens. They've got anesthetic uh, ammunition. Larmo, you should be fine with your stun settings on your electro electro stunners. Okay. Uh, I don't want you guys offing any of these people, and we don't want to, any of them caught in the fire. If we can capture all the members of the, you know, who are protecting the warehouse, drag them out, 
um, then use the cans of bison energy drink. Uh, those are incendiary grenades. Wherever you see a nice pile of, of drugs or a box, set one of these off, set them on a timer so they all go off at the same time. We're not going to, it's not going to destroy the entire building because the sprinklers will come on, but the combination of several minutes of fire followed by several minutes of water will ruin everything that they've got. The cops will come and they'll put out the fire. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it will hurt the, the organization and it'll keep all of these extra grum, gumdrops we just dumped into this city from getting distributed. What's going to happen to Joe? Joe's on his own. Wow. If, if Joe's smart, he'll use the, confu the confusion and the ruckus to get the hell out of the bar. Because I trust yeah. you, if you guys pull this off, they're going to pull half of their personnel out of the club to come here, mm -hmm. thinking a rival gang has done this. We need to do this and be long gone back at the safe house decrypting that data before that hammer comes down. All right. Um, are you guys up for this? If this is too much of an ask, we can scrub this. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to be on the roof. Uh, across the way, and you see that he has a uh, a needler rifle with anesthetic ammunition. He goes, if I see anybody in trouble and I've got a shot, I'll take it. But once you're inside, I won't be able to cover you. Give me half an hour to get in position and then make whatever approach you want. Okay. All right, and he leaves. How are we getting in with weapons? You have hand. These are all handguns. These are all, you know, concealable. No okay. conce concealable weapons. All right. So, is my electro stunner concealable? Sorry, it's large and bulky, but you know, if you've got a cloak or a heavy a coat, it should, yeah, a leather jacket, long leather jacket, <sighs> that goes with my bike. Right. Are they going to recognize who Larmo's supposed to be? These guys probably not because this is several blocks away. Um, so let me pull up. <laughs> okay, so you guys are right about here. You're, you're dropped off here. This building here is the warehouse. Where's the door that I'm supposed to, the side door I'm supposed to go around to? Here. Okay. Okay. Like, like this door is like closed. Um, so how do you guys want to approach? This is a, uh, it's an abandoned building for all intents and purposes. Right, right. right. It's abandoned building. A, a seemingly abandoned building. Although the fast food restaurant is open. Uh, the fat, wait, no, what? The fast food restaurant's open? Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully when they see smoke, they won't be there. They'll leave. Um, so there are doors uh, just to the there's Left. a door here, yeah. but that one's closed. Okay. So, th sc sorry. So screening is what? That's, that's where I'm supposed to go in. That's where that's, that's supposed to go yeah. in. And the storage is where the stuff is going to be. Yes. Okay. And what about staff? The just the people who are working in the warehouse. Yes. So do we all go just through the front door, or do we not all go through the front door? Well, there's a there's a guy outside of this door. Okay. I'm not much for the planning part. You're not much for the what? The planning. Oh. 
I was just going to go through the door they told me to go through. Right. Might as like, well. Like these doors are are kind of shuttered. Okay. So I guess you don't really have much of a choice. You got to go through the front door. All right. So you go there. Uh, and as you're there, I'll go walking up to them. Okay. They're like, they say, well, good evening. Oh, it's sure. a uh, human and a Vrusk. Uh, I go walk straight up to him. I show him the card. And they say, well, what can we get you? Um, I was told to come here for fairy dust. How much are you looking for? Oh, we got to go to a party. Did you go with me or are you guys hanging back? I think we'd be hanging back if you're just buying drugs, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, you've got to rush the place and take over the. Sorry, I mean know. hanging back, I, like you know, off to the side. Not right. Yeah, not, like, the, not right we, Three it. of us wouldn't walk right up to the door. I don't really okay. know these things. I'm just assuming. All right, he says. I got a I got a party to go to. Oh, we'll be able to hook you up then. Why don't you step in uh, and uh, we don't like to do these things out in the open. Oh, oh yeah, makes sense. I look so, at Marmo. Should we? So these guys open the door. Now, and, before, uh, before we walked up, it, it, would it be possible to set the shock gloves up so I could reach behind me and put them on? Yes. Okay. So when they open the doors, that's what I do. <laughs> okay. So they open the doors. One person is holding the door, and they're going to be staying outside. The other person is walking in with you, mm -hmm. and they're looking to see if all three of you are walking in. Oh, I uh, think we plan this ahead of time, and we would, if we're going to do that, we would do that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Marmo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, in we go, in we go. Okay, you go in, and they. Did the other guy stay on the door? Yeah, he's going to stay outside at the door. Is it open? No, he's going to close it unless okay. you make your move before this. We should put something I, in that door to keep it from locking. <laughs> I punch him. Okay, so as you guys are walking in, it's, there are these two guys, and there's a third guy inside in that little room where you were walking in. So you will all be able to get and attack this round of, of surprise. Um, they really didn't think anybody would be crazy enough to, to do this. Um, and, you know, you have the innocent Cersei farm boy thing happening. <laughs> um, so they were completely unaware that they were, you know, flat-footed, not expecting it. So, all right. So when we walk in, the guy's, like, are walking outside, and you're, as he's walking by, you punch him? The guy right. at the door, yeah. It's, it's yeah. immediately on. As soon as the door's open and he's halfway through it, he punches one of the, the guy either who was staying outside or the one walking you in. The guy staying outside. Okay. All right, give me that attack, and then everyone else can do their attacks. Then we'll take it from there. All right, shot gloves. That is, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Well, it's not a zero, zero, but it is a 99. All right, oh, so that's oh, a miss. Oh. All right, Larmo, there are three people. One outside, two inside. He just attacked the one outside and missed. Uh, okay, I rolled 23, so I hit uh, the one who was walking outside with my uh, shock gloves. Walking inside or staying outside? The one who was, sorry, the one who was walking outside. Nobody was walking outside. One guy was meeting you inside. Okay. There's one guy in the room, one guy walking into the room, one guy standing outside. Oh, the guy's already outside. The door's closed. Right. Oh, so the guy who was walking us in. Okay. So you, Harlan, you attacked the one who was holding the door, waiting to close it, yep. and missed. Larmo, you're attacking the guy who is was walking you in. I'm going. You run. You've hit with a twenty-three. Yes. yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Was it? 
Were you going for shock on the shock gloves or stun on the shock gloves? What, what, what they said? I'm not trying to kill anybody. That didn't answer my question. Well, which one is which? Which one is not going to kill them? Stun, I guess, uh, right? Shock isn't likely to kill them, but you do need to weaken them before the stun will have an effect. Or you can get lucky and stun them right away. If you want, you're going for pure capture. It would be it would be stun. Hold on, let me. The shock gloves have a stun set. They they uh, do not. They do not. Okay. They do not. So you punch him. So give me a punching score, and then add two d ten to it. Okay, so uh, it's four, two, three, ten. Uh, two D four, two, only nine. Okay, nine points. Okay, Thorga. I'm going after the guy that was the surprise guy, the third one inside that we didn't mm -hmm. know was in there initially. Mm -hmm. Uh, with my electro stunner. Um, okay. Do I? I do so. I, I choose stun or not stun. That's the whole right. deal with that one. Okay. Well, if not you don't stun. have if you don't have beam skill, you do have a needler with anesthetic dart that you know, and that would allow you three oh. attacks. And you probably have a because okay. that's a projectile weapon. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, then I I would have I would have switched to that then. Okay. Where okay. We, so so three attacks or one attack? How does that? Uh, needler three pistol rounds? fires three round. So so oh so roll once for three rounds. You know, one roll three times. Okay, that's a thirty-six, a thirty-two, and a fifty-six. So, how many hits? How many misses? Uh, what's my to hit? That's that would be my um, one half of your dex plus ten if you've got projectile. That's Level one. So it's twenty-three plus two, ten is thirty-three. So that's two hits, I think. Right. I would. Have, I'd be giving everybody a plus ten to hit this round. Okay. So, oh, so it's definitely, definitely two hits. Then not a third. Okay. So roll one d ten for the first dart. That's a seven. Okay. Hold on. Yep. So seven. That drops him by seven points. This was a human uh, female. So does not go down. Okay. And give me the damage on the second. Eight. That's 15 below what they usually have. Um, and they do fall out. Okay. They succumb. Okay. And 24, 42, and 98. So Harland, the one that you missed, he appears very surprised and, uh, Two, sh two out of three shots from a needle or rifle from across the street hit him. <laughs> and let me just sort that out. Through the open door. Oh, he's standing at the door. Oh, he's at the door. Okay. Yes. Seven. So basically, the one guy was walking us in. There was mm -hmm. another guy in the room, and he was standing at the doorway. So mm -hmm. I turned around and tried to hit him. Okay, right. so what happens is... He turns to you and starts going for an automatic pistol. He gets hit with two out of three uh, darts in his back, and he just slumps down at your feet. So out of the three people who you were facing off with, two of them have been knocked out. Um, Lormo, you've shocked one for nine. He draws the auto pistol, and uh, now we're going to be an initiative. His initiative modifier is five. He will go on six. So roll 1d10, add your initiative. I am. I have an eight. Go before him. I roll six. a ten. You go before him. Six. And that's five. You are, everyone goes before him. All right. Ten plus so. Five is this was the guy who was walking you guys in. Yes. 
Um, so he's pulling his gun, trying to yell, if you can drop him this round, you may not have caused any kind of alarm because the shock glove wasn't that loud and the needler pistols are very silent. Um, so you really haven't raised much alarm at this point. Um, so Harlan, what do you do? I'll hit him. Shot gloves? Yep. Go. Um, is there any modifier to this? No, he's now fully aware. Okay. Then I missed. Okay. Larmo. I had a six. I think Thorga had a higher number than me. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. head anyways, facing the other direction, probably. I rolled a seven. So you hit with the shot gloves? Yeah. Can you give me another damage? All right. What was that damage again? Four 2d10 plus, 10 2D10. plus your yeah. punch. Two. So was I looking at this correctly? If, if 15. It, if it's a roll that ends in a zero with melee, that you have a chance of knockout? Yes. Okay. It has cool. to hit, though. Yeah, well. 11. Oh, sorry. 15. 15. 20. All right. He's taken 24 points of damage. So, Thorga, any damage you do with the anesthetic, he's suitably, he's very weakened. So, even if you hit once, you've got a good chance of putting him down. Okay. So, fire. And even if you roll, unless you roll max damage on all three, and then you'll kill him. Okay. Well, shoot again. That's a, that's a 42. So there's no does, bonus this round, right? No does, he have to shoot, does he have to shoot three times if he knocks him down on like the second shot? He's, he's got to declare whether he's shooting. It's like I'm he shooting can't... all three. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's a 14, so that's definitely a hit. Okay. And that's a 35. That is, I said, that. that's all. That's not a hit. All right, that's so one. Give me damage for that one. <clears throat> that's an eight. Eight. So he is damaged for 28, 233. 32 points, which means he's got uh, 18 left, and I rolled a 42. So this guy is now asleep. So, so I'm going to put it back up the map for a minute, and I'll explain what's going on. Well, I'll drag the other guy indoor. Inside. Okay, you drag everybody in. Very good idea. <laughs> but I'm going to leave his foot in the door so it's slightly cracked open. Okay, you do so. Oh, well, I should have said this before. Uh, T gave you guys a uh, ring of binder clips. So you've got the plasteel zips. I was going to ask about that. Right. Like, okay. What are these guys going to wake up? Let's so you guys can yeah. secure all three of these people. Okay. Oh, um, you are now in this. Do you have anything room. to gag them so they don't go screaming? They're asleep. They won't wake up for at least an hour. Okay, that's fine. Um, roll your, uh, roll your INT. Everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I are dumb. Yup. None of you? I failed by 50. Okay. As you're dragging everybody in here and, and situating and making sure the door is propped open, um, Somebody comes uh, peeking around, like hearing that the door was open and a sale was coming. They're coming to kind of facilitate the transaction. And you see a, uh, I'm going to take this down for a minute. Uh, you see, you're basically surprised. Uh, somebody kind of comes around that corner and spies you guys in the middle of your nefarious zip-tying, foot-propping the door and uh, dragging people in. Uh, and it's, uh, it is a human. And the human... No, this would be the Rusk, because there were two humans and a Rusk outside. Um, this is the... So this Rusk, instead of choosing to attack you guys, darts back, takes 
cover. Um, let me put this back up. No. Well, I'm glad we have some air support back there. Whoa, oh, Jesus. Sorry, don't know what the hell that was. Um, you don't have any support because you guys closed the door. Um, so this person sees all three of you in here and then dives behind this wall and yells out, uh, ah. they're rolling up on us. Um, and you hear commotion from the storage area and the backstaff area. So what do you guys want to do at this point? Mask up. Doze grenade, yep. mask up. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Boop. So um, you throw your masks on, you grab those grenades, and everyone can make a throw as people are rushing to uh, to this area. Okay. So, yeah. so what I'm going to say is that unless you really mess these rolls up, you can flood this entire area here with those gas. All right. Um, what's the so throw? It's going to be half your decks plus whatever your if you have thrown weapons, which I don't think any of you do. How about an athlete? Athletic. Um, no, that would be doing stuff with you. It would need to be thrown weapons. Okay. Like even if you were throwing a javelin, it would be thrown weapons. Well, I didn't mess up too bad. Uh, did you get under half your decks? No. Okay. I got I got uh, just over my regular decks. Okay. I fail horribly. Thorga? Oh, yeah, I got a 53. I failed as well. We all hit the wall and it bounced back on us. Clonk, clonk. <laughs> well, at least they can't see us now. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all what right. happened? <laughs> yeah, none of you managed to get the, uh, the dose gas anywhere near. Um, so... Harlan, you were close, yes? I was not to my grill roll, no. All right, I'm going to have, we're going to do the random grenade bouncing table. So so how do those grenades work? Are they like our tear gas canisters where it comes out the top, or are they just really just explode? They they explode, and I'm going to say they explode in a, in a wonderful puff. Okay. And uh, we're going to figure out exactly where these went okay so i'm assuming uh where did you where were you aiming were you aiming here where the person was all right i'm gonna ask you one at a time harlan where were you aiming where the s is R right there yep okay roll a 10. five okay yours lands about here flooding this area um, Larma, where were you throwing? I was throwing right in the middle of the doorway, uh, two, no, one square to the right. No, no, one square to the right. Yep, right around there. Okay, almost the same spot. Drop a 10. Yeah, but right in the center. But yeah, drop a 10. Okay, clear. One. <laughs> It bounces this way, and even though you missed where you were hitting, you hit where you were. You, you, you were you basically landed right on the guy who dove for cover. So that guy will be fully affected. So I missed, but I just got a lucky bounce. You got a lucky, basically got a lucky bounce, Thorga. <laughs> where better to be lucky than good sometimes. You, uh, where where did you? We had basically these guys are aiming yep. for right around here. Where were you aiming? I was trying to be really exciting and bank it off the wall just above the A. I was trying to hit the wall and bounce towards the unseen area. You were hoping that. to get somewhere around here. Yeah. Okay, roll a 10. Because it might go just every, anywhere now. Three. Yeah. Three. Um, Too many video games. Bank you you basically hit it really high on the ceiling here. Um, and it scoots like down this way. Um, so so Larmo, the one that took the weird bounce and ended up over here, 
you hear that guy just float. I rolled a 63. They did not have a mask on. Um, and Harlan, yours that took the weird bounce this way, mm -hmm. there was someone in the storage room running this way. And your weird bounce caught him. And I rolled a 93. <laughs> so they go down. They're going to take a nap. Unfortunately, the third guy um, I'm going to have to stop this for a second. The third guy is not affected by the barrage of those grenades. Because and he's immune or because he just didn't, there's no gas the, around him? Yeah, there's no gas around him. You didn't uh, you weren't lucky enough to to just get where he was and better than nothing could have been worse you're actually doing extremely well would it be would we have done better if we just had to try to roll <laughs> like bowling <laughs> Oh boy. That's never good. All right. I rolled randomly to see who gets this one. Um, through the doze grass, you hear people like slumping, slumping. And then you hear the uh, zap of an electro stunner. And Thorga is hit for 21 points of electrical damage. Where did it come from? It came from... Now I can put this back up. Hold on. <clears throat> the thing is, if we're going to shoot back, can we see through the gas? Yeah, he just rolled really well. And actually, he saw where you guys were throwing from before the gas came. Um... Um, probably somewhere around here. Hmm. You're, 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 you, he might be taking, you know, taking cover around here and uh, firing down the hall. So there's kind of gas a little bit behind him and in front of him. And there's so there's some gas here. There's some gas here. There's some gas here. He's kind of here. What's the scale on this? Um, I would say you know. Three, you know, two meters, three meters. Okay. Are we back to the top? Yep, we're back to the top. All right. Well, I guess I will pull my gyrojet with the tangler load. Okay. And I'm just going to run straight in. You're going to run straight, like, in. Okay, you run straight in. Where I think the shot came from. Okay. Are you guys going to cover him as he's doing that? Yes. If I can do so without hitting him. <laughs> All right. He's running well, through the, those those gas and, you know, so there's going to be a chance if you roll, like, really, really badly. All right. I promise if I get shot, I'll ra yell really loud. <laughs> Larmo, what do you want to do? Um, I want to fire, but I'm more so to suppress him, uh, the the guy, rather than actually try to hit him. If you're, I want firing, to, I if I you're want to firing fire. to keep his head down, you don't yeah. even have to roll. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm okay. trying to keep his head down so Harley can get up on him. Okay, Thorga, I'm gonna follow and try to give him cover. Like what we're try to angle myself to provide cover for him as he's moving forward. But you're also rushing up. Yes. Okay, so two of you rush. One of you, uh, one of you just provides some kind of non-lethal, you know, non-threatening covering fire. The non-threatening covering fire, I'll give him a minus five modifier, just because he's kind of flinching. And what happens is the two of you come running this way into this empty patch outside of the gas, 
and you see a Rusk with an electric stunner here. And you guys come running out of the gas, and he will fire at one of the two of you with a minus five modifier for the thunder fire. And he rolls an 89. So uh, he misses. And you guys now have a clear shot. You know, he's not in cover, and there's no gas. Um, and it's top of the round. All right. I will fire the tangler loads off the gyro jet. Roll. And he is, I guess that's considered short range, so that's what? Mm -hmm. Straight straight up roll? Yep, or? straight up. You're at point four. Well, you're, you're, you're fine. Uh, that is a slight, slight miss. There's no no modifier? No. Okay. Uh, that is a hell of a miss. And that actually hits. 21. Okay. Um... It uh, you hit him with the tangler round. You know it's going left, right. You hit uh, kind of dead center, and you uh, he's like held fast in tangler threads, but he's still conscious and alive. So he, is he entangled though? He's entangled. Okay. So Thorga, do you want to fire with your needler as you were going to anyway? Oh yeah, I'm angry because he hit me with this electro stunner. So I'm okay. Like, so take your three up. shots. That's a hit. Thirty-two. Oh no, sorry. Are we rolling against straight? Uh, There's still half the value now. Oh, it's it's always half dex plus. Always your, half dex. Okay. Half dex plus ten per level. Okay. So that's that's a hit. That's one hit. Two hits. That's twenty-three. And that's a miss. So two hits. Okay, so roll 1d10 for the first one. That's a five. So that drops him down by five points. And I rolled a 67, which is enough. And even though he's tangled, he's hit twice and uh, passes out. Okay, I move you up and I'm in that doorway into the storage area and I'm seeing if there's anyone in there. Um, there is, you've cleared the warehouse. You've captured oh. all six of the guards here. Um, you see that this area over here has like a couch, a big screen TV, uh, you know, a video game system, uh, a mini fridge. There's half e a half eaten box of pizza on a table. And here it's just boxes upon boxes of. You know, gumdrops of uh, uh, cosmic nuggies, uh, cases upon cases of fairy dust sticks. I hope being downwind of this doesn't affect anybody. <laughs> so what do you do? Give her masks on. We're good. Um, no, I'm not talking about us. Oh, you mean, the, about you mean the, the neighborhood? neighborhood. Fast yeah. food joint. Yeah. Be kind of a mellow evening. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, who's got the fire? Well, I mean, I'm I'll sure we it, all I, I've shared it. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, you would have shared it with you all. I'll start gathering, the, getting, make sure all these guys are bound up and getting them all gathered up. Get okay, them closer so to the door. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you have them all bound up while you're binding them up and dragging them over to the door. Um, uh, so the other two are, are setting these grenades. What, how much of a timer are you setting? Well, we want to make sure it goes off when no one comes in. Uh, I don't know. How long does it take to get out of here? It doesn't take more than a minute to get out of here. Right. Is the building going to go up in flames? Like, what's the building made of if we set these? Um, he's pretty sure that the sprinklers will come on and keep the building from burning completely. But the combination of the fire and the water damage will destroy all of the drugs, which is really what Look, he was going for. Let, let's get it, give us like two minutes. That'll give us enough time to get to the door and get everyone who's inside and unconscious outside. Okay. Um, you're, as you're doing that, you hear, um, have you secured the area? Should I bring the van around? Yes. yes. Okay. He goes, we're on, he goes, I don't know if they got a call off, but we got to consider that we're on a short fuse here. Yep. I'll be there. He says, I'll be there in three minutes. So he set the timer for three minutes. 
Yeah, three minutes. And I'm going to steal the power cable for their game controller or for their game system. And I'm going to smash their TV remotes. Okay, you do so. You, uh... You I grab a slice of pizza. You oh, yeah. A, you, thread, you grab a slice of pizza. Um, <laughs> set these grenades. Well, it's um, grenades contaminated. You hear, you hear the, the van like come screeching to a halt, and then you hear like <laughs> on the door. Well, the door's cracked open. Oh, okay. He tosses it, and he starts dragging these guys out into the street. Uh, while he's dragging them out in the street, I'm going to go around to the fast food place. Mm -hmm. Is there, like, glass front? How yes. How set up? Okay. Um, yeah, we need them out of the building, so I'm going to load a regular clip for the gyro jet and just fire it through the glass into the ceiling, like around the corner. You do that, you start a panic. People start rushing out of the street. Um, what? But what I'm going to do is kind of lead around the building and just Yeah, fire. you don't want anybody to see that you're doing. Yeah. Right. And then um, run, run towards the van. Okay. You do that. You run towards the van. As you guys are rushing out, do you grabbing any of the sleeping people to drag them out of the building? Yeah. I thought okay. that's what he was doing already. Yeah, he was doing that already. Yeah. Right. But there are six of them and there's one of him. Yeah. yeah I'm okay. dragging. So, we'll all do it. You have everybody out as the as the incendiary grenades start going off in the storage area. Um, and he just floors it and uh, gets out of the area as quickly as possible. And he looks at Thorga and he goes, Oh, that's a good thing you guys have a medic with you. That looks serious. Are you okay? Not really, but I'll, I'll survive. Okay. Do. Um he, Larmo, he tosses you a stim dose. Okay, I use it on him. Okay, you're temporarily healed 10 points. Uh, and he goes racing back to the safe house. Uh, and Do that is. a police is, scanner, by the way, this guy? He doesn't. Okay. He goes, I, I, getting one would have been too suspicious. But you're not even out of the area when you start to hear, you know, he puts on the regular news broadcast and they're talking about, you know, a shooting at McFriendly's uh, followed by a, a fire in the warehouse next door. Um, uh, you know, there are unconfirmed reports of, uh, of, of people on the scene in, in uh, you know, who'd been apprehended, who'd been apprehended earlier. <clears throat> and the police are making no comment, and uh, the story is quickly buried in the news cycle um, as some inter-gang related activity. Uh, so all of you get back to the warehouse. We're going to say, Thorgar, you are treated by Pink Noddle uh, for this rather serious electro stunner blast. <sighs> Um, Larmo, I need you to make a computer use check as he immediately sends you to make a copy of everything on this disc. Okay. And then, um, and if, tell me what you get. It's, uh, is it INT or logic? It's your computer skill. Computer which skill. Which is, computer uh, oh, okay. lo got lo yeah. half logic plus 10. Right. Okay. Uh, I I have a forty three and I rolled a forty five. All right, the decryption, the copying is taking a little longer than uh, normally because it's it's such a vast file. So you're going to need to roll again after an hour. Okay. Uh, but during that hour, Harlan, is there anything that you wish to do? I did make my second roll. Um, no, I don't think I have anything to do. Okay, so in the second hour, yes, you maybe keep an eye out. Not that I'm very good at it. Okay, so roll, uh, roll an INT. No, no, no. Okay, so you get it takes you two hours to make a copy of the material. Uh, okay. He keeps the original, 
and he gives uh, the three of you the copy. And he says, okay, um, can you run a decryption on mine? An encryption on yours? Decryption. He wants a decryption. To... Right. Uh, sure. I can try. So that would be your thieving. It's thieving. kind of defeating okay. security. Okay, hang on. Thievery is thirty-three. <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> All right, you immediately decrypt it, <laughs> and now he kind of got. He has it. You know, he has all of their files at his fingertips. And he says, all right, so I'm going to take this down as it's no longer relevant. He says, tomorrow, I want you to take your copy. I'm going to try and set up a meeting with someone, uh, someone I trust. Uh, you're to give it to them. Uh, they'll be expecting me, but I won't be there. I trust them, but I don't trust them enough not to be followed and inadvertently betray me to the authorities. You know, there are a lot of people looking for me. Uh, there, it is risky if you guys feel that the situation is not up and up. Abort, don't do the drop, don't take the meeting. So go in and really check around. Um, I'll know whether I can trust this person or not because they'll either have this as an ambush or have this as a regular meeting. So you want all three of us to go to this? meet and drop only one of you needs to but somebody should be there covering them in case it does go south i'll do the drop because i'm not i'm going to be crap for watching for ambushes yeah that's what i was going to suggest <clears throat> okay all right i'm going to start uh i'm going to start breaking down the safe house deleting all of our credit files i'm going to start wiping this place down of prints um, call me once the drop is done and then get back down here. Um, I'll deposit the, the money I owe you into a legitimate account. Um, not this black market account and, uh, you guys can go back to your lives. I hope it's that simple. It should be. You haven't killed anyone. So what's with the second copy? So, oh, that's for me. That's for safekeeping. If if we are running, if you guys are heading into a trap, and I can't trust this guy, um, I want another copy uh, on my on my end in case uh, things go south. But you know, I know this guy. Um, back when. I was new to the force. He was a young district attorney, and uh, we put we did a lot of good work together. He's risen through the ranks, so have I. Um, I do trust him, and he's not, thanks to Larmo's decryption, he's not on any of the lists. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. His name I mean, if is. This goes uh, well, or, or is this it? If this goes well, after you come back and we settle up financials, that'll be it. Okay. Um, the information will be in the right hands of the right person. Um, you'll get paid. You're at the spaceport. I suggest that um, you get the hell off of this planet, uh, either, at the rest, uh, either at the rest and relaxation station, head to um, Kitker, you know, the sister planet to Cersei, because there are two settled planets in this system. Um, or, you know, take a suborbital shuttle back to the uh, capital. Uh, but, you know, definitely get out of this city. 
Um, either either way, look forward to hearing about what happens. I'll be keeping an ear out for uh, the news feed. Right. Uh, this if this goes well and we can trust this guy, um, they're going to be. We're going to be. We'll be kicking off a hornet's nest, uh, and uh, we need to get start getting clear of it. Don't we have like a five night stay? Uh, you do a gold Corona or something along. Yeah, on the space station. That's right. Um, you could easily get a shuttle to take you to the space station. So he gives everybody back their IDs and he sets up this meeting. His name is Emric Doucette. Um, he says uh, he's going to be wearing. A, he speaks. You basically hear him on the phone and says, "Look, I'm going to be quick. I don't know if this call's being traced." But you know, I'm I, I need to meet with you. It's important. And Emric's like, you know, T, you, you know, I'm so sorry about you know your your what your mate. You need to come in. There's a lot of questions. And he goes, I'll I'll meet you at the on the foot of the courthouse when you get out of work. I'll be there. Come out for lunch. I'll be on the park bench, you know, by the statue where we used to have lunch all the time. And um, we'll talk about, you know, what's going on. But I got to do this face to face and I can't stay on the phone any longer. He goes either, you know, if you're my friend, be there. And he just hangs up. And uh, he says, so 12 o'clock tomorrow, uh, it's in a park across from the where it's across from the courthouse by a fountain. Go early, scout the place out. There'll be a human. He's about 50. Um, he wears a beard, and uh, he'll be wearing a red tie. He always does. Okay. So next and, day we do that. Okay. So how early do you want to go? He's supposed to meet you at noon. What about my health? How soon do I gain, regain? Uh, We're going to say that Fink Noddle patches you back up rather quickly. And okay. the next day you're you're back to full. Okay, thank you. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, it's um, important in case this goes south. It, it's going to take a while for the hair to regrow, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's tinged. Bold, bold patch on your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> All that singed fur. <laughs> okay. So um I don't know, an hour, figure an hour. It's enough okay. time to you get to the park an hour before the meet. And what do you want to do? Um so I'm going to look for a food cart <clears throat> and I'm going to get something to eat and I'm just kinda like eat whatever it is I'm eating and just like wandering around just aimlessly, just enjoying whatever it is I'm eating. I guess if I'm going to do the drop, just let me know if you see something. Okay. So Larmo is not even looking for an ambush. She's just... Oh, no, I'm up. looking. You never said I was looking for an ambush. She said, I'm just going to go to a food cart and walk around and enjoy... Well, I'm trying to be... I'm trying not to be obvious that I'm looking around. Yeah, but it was so... It was so subtle. You never said you were looking. <laughs> So I roll. Thought that was implied. <laughs> Unless you tell me, nothing is implied. <laughs> All right, Harlan, you're just going to go in blind, trusting uh, the other two to spot. Is that it? Well, yeah, because I'm not going to spot anything. All I'm right, going to. I'll get something to eat and sit at a bench near where we're supposed to meet right. the guy. Everyone, uh, roll your int. <laughs> I got a 12. Nope. Thorger, you're pretty sure there's no hidden ambush. It looks like everybody's just coming out of the office for lunch at the park. Um, uh, this park is in the middle of several office buildings and civic buildings. That donut was so good. I went to get another one. And uh, Harlan, you do <laughs> see a human about 50 with a beard and a red tie walking over and sitting on the edge of the fountain looking around nervously. Okay. I will get up and walk that direction. Um, he looks up at, as you approach him, like a little bit of surprise. T couldn't come. Oh. 
Doesn't trust me, huh? Doesn't know what's going on. Well, I'm not surprised. He said to give you this, and I'll hand him over to him. He goes, and what is this? It's a list. Uh, can you narrow it down, pal? <laughs> uh, as near as I know, it's a list of dirty cops and dirty judges and dirty lawyers. And we got it at the honeycomb. Honeycomb. There was a fire at one of their warehouses last night. That's sad. <laughs> All right, he's gonna try and read you. Uh, I, I'm not really. I'm not really hiding. You were like hiding it. A what? You look like that. He rolled an O nine, and he's a lawyer. So he, you look like that dog that just ate all of the Twinkies off the counter. And you're like, oh, that's that's terrible. <laughs> he looks, uh, and he goes, try not least, to smile too much. He when says, I well, it. at least no one was killed that time. That was the point. <laughs> he says, I'm not going to insult you by asking your name, but why don't you sit for a minute and you and I should have a talk. I'll sit down. And he says, look, T and I go way back. And if you're right about this list, um, I can get people I trust to look into it. Uh, is there a copy just in case? Uh, yeah. Uh, good. Don't let me know where it is. Um, if I ask for it, you know, uh, something's gone wrong. Um, but we can take it from here. With this list, I, I know who we can trust. Once I decrypt it, I'll know for sure who I can trust. Um, and I can start making arrests. And, and But... I don't, I don't think your list is decrypted or is encrypted. Um, I'll, I got. I can handle that on my end. Um, actually, it's better that it's not decrypted because if it was decrypted before I got it, it'd be inadmissible mm -hmm. because someone could have altered the data. Sure. But what I'm more concerned with is T. Um, there are people who are going to shoot him on sight. And especially after I start working on these files and getting arrests made, um, his life's going to be hanging by a thread. Um, the only way I can, the only way he's going to live through this is if I can bring him in and get him, if I can get him to a secure facility where people can't get to him pending trial. Um, I have a few sites that I can send him to. He'll be safe. But if if we don't bring him in and lock him down, he's out of control. I don't think that he wants to live through this. I mean, you've been working with him, yes? I mean, is he is he is he clear headed? Is he logical? He's made me question things and I don't know him. I'm not going to ask you specifics. I don't want to know. Um, but he trusts you. Yes. Uh, as much as I guess he can. He says he goes into his briefcase and he takes out a set of, uh, Rusk sized sonic restraints. And he says, if you, if you can take him down and get him into these and call me, I can get policemen that are trustworthy who won't shoot him on site to take him into custody and take him to one of our off the grid facilities. It's probably the only way to save his life at this point. Should I just ask him? There are rumors that he shot an unarmed, unconscious cop. Is that what ha I can't remember? Is that what happened? Yes. I remember he shot somebody. I couldn't remember if he was unconscious already. Yeah, they were stunned. Um, if you ask him and that doesn't, that conversation doesn't go your way, there's no telling what he could do. 
But if I'll, if you I'll, if you have a way to take him down and and get him in my custody, it's probably the only way to save his life at this point. But the the choice is yours. We'll have to think about it. Well, there's also a five thousand credit reward for bringing him in alive. Okay. Keep the restraints. Here's my num. Here's my number. You think about it. I'm gonna start to work on these files. Okay. All right. And you walk away, and there's no ambush, and you can, you can or don't. You can fill in your friends. Oh. I, I walk over to them with donuts. You got to try these. These are really good. <laughs> like you powdered just sugar. <laughs> literally shove it into your face. <laughs> uh, he, he wants us to bring him in. He thinks he's going to get killed. We might get killed trying to bring him in. <laughs> I said, why don't we just ask him? Yeah. He seems Look, on I mean, top of things. He has had a pretty good sense of what's going on. He definitely has a plan here. I don't know if that plan... I don't think he trusts anybody well enough, even this guy, to voluntarily give himself up. Uh, so... I, but I, I, I guess I don't want to like knock him out and restrain him and then call someone to pick him up. I mean, I don't really trust anybody either at this point. I mean, how many times in a 24 hour period can Torga get shot? <laughs> he is unlucky with my random rolls, I'm afraid. <laughs> and I'm not singling you out, I am rolling no, randomly no, whenever so these. Good. It These just means that happen. statistically I shouldn't be shot again anytime soon. Well, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> not, not, not these dice, no. I know. I mean, we could ask him, but, I mean, if he doesn't want to, I'm not going to force him. Okay. All right, so. So is that is that what we're going to do? We're just going to ask him? I mean, that's my opinion. I, I You're free. Everyone is free to give me their opinion, too. I just want to ask him. I do too. He's he's been on the up and up with us, as far as we know. Okay. So, do we want to end here and do the whole final scene with T um, next week after Joe resolves getting her friend out, and then we think Noddle's here to um, be part of this end uh, with T. Or, I mean, we can just press forward if you guys want to have that conversation with him and see how this ends for you guys. Yeah, we probably hold off. and I think it's a good stopping point. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so everyone, thanks for watching. This is the end of session four of Dancing with Dragons. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like on the video if you do like it. And subscribe to the channel if you are so inclined. Star Frontiers is alive and well with Frontier Explorer. It's a free-to-download, pay-what-you-will fanzine filled with great articles by talented and enthusiastic Star, War Star Frontiers fans. If you want to get physical copies, you can order them through DriveThruRPG. Um, you can also be part of the Citizens of the Frontier uh, campaign by uh, joining us on our Patreon channel, where you'll find exclusive art maps, content, um, and eventually the, the completed scenarios. Um, our Patreon channel and links to Frontier Explorer and Drive Through RPG are in the show notes. And last, thanks to our patron backers, Jim Barrier and Fred Calver, um, for their generous support of this campaign. And until next time, everyone, stay safe. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.